Greetings, everyone, and welcome back to TNO. I'm your host, Mr. Mokulover. But we have lessons from the past. Marshal Ivan Kornov inspected faded battle plans in the near darkness of a military archive. A single candle accompanied him. His hands traced unfortunately inadequate tactics of commanders 20 years dead. Visualizations of the battles occurred over and over, and his head always reaching an identical conclusion. Failure. With decades of hindsight, it was simple to identify the mistakes of his comrades as well as himself, of the division there. A reroute supplies here. Hold that point, the mental wars turned like an hourglass. Eventually, the sands ran out and Kornov was left with a victory. What could have been, he thought. Then he shook his head. It was no use to dwell on alternate possibilities when an all-too-real war awaited him. The Russian traitors and German fascists wouldn't give him the luxury of knowing their moves before they made him. Kornov's eyelids fell heavy. It was very late and it became difficult to focus on the splotched ink and ambiguous handwriting. He gave a last look at the ancient tactics. They had failed once but never again. This time, they must succeed. He reached for the candle and started off uh, of air with his forefinger and thumb, flooding the room with a thick darkness. What can Graves tell us? Well, we'll read about some other stuff and then we'll talk about Graves. In which we still need to complete the side. And actually, I pretty much finished the workers' and peasants' army. Uh, I can't remember if I actually read this one or not, but let's do this one. The West Siberian People's Republic is a sole legitimate successor to the USSR and Leninist ideology. Thus, its Red Army of workers and peasants is the only legitimate continuation of the Red Army so that bravely fought and died in the war against free fascism. To honor those fallen heroes, it is only fitting that we adopt the same basic doctrines and military tactics of our forefathers. However, to ensure that this new Red Army will stand victorious in the coming wars against the reactionaries, fascists, and revisionists who have taken control of the motherland, we must re-innovate or innovate and build upon these principles. Only then will the Red Army of workers and peasants be unstoppable juggernaut of revolutionary fur fury it was meant to be. So we finished that one. And so we got to finish this side first, pretty much. So, do we want spiritual and political flourishing? Or do we want a cultural proletarian overall? Now, we like the stability and construction speed, so I think for this one, we went left-left. I think we'll go at left-left as well, just because we can. Quota immigration, together union equal affirmative action versus unity foremost and enduring, because I want to play as two men again in some time, because there's two different leaders you can get, so let's go with spiritual and political flourishing. We are the only hope for re reunifying Russia, and our best tool for that is our citizens. But they must have a high morale. Propaganda must be produced so our citizens know that they, have, they, have, they are the best group of people to reunify the nation, and that they are the most capable and morally sound in all of Russia, from Moscovine to the Far East. The West Siberian People's Republic needs to know that. So, uh, we have this whole five-year plan thing. So I recommend that don't worry about the famine. If famine happens, who cares? Just let it happen. Uh, I think for this campaign, I don't want to do that. I still want to emphasize, you know, the five-year plan and stuff. But the next time I play as two men or whoever has this you know, little five-year plan thing, I want to maybe then try it in which we just have a ton of famines again and again and again. So I want to be careful with this just because I don't know what it's about. So we'll see what happens. Consumer goods, construction speed, civilian infrastructure. Civilian, ooh, I want to do that one. Keep getting another civilian factory. It hurts our consumer goods factories though, but that, which really sucks. But let's go with Soviet cosmopolitanism. We must shatter petty differences and come together as a single nation. There will no longer be any partisan divides. All people in West Siberia will be equal members of the proletariat. There is no need for the former national identities. They will be citizens of the West Siberian People's Republic, and we shall unite ourselves to further our goals, in which we get uh, replace open immigration with naturalization and open refugee programs with Gimme Your Poor. Cool. And increase trade opinion of it more. The newsletter. Matevi Nosov was an oblivious man more often than not. While his friends would not go as far as to say he was stupid, it was greeted by the man in the small village that he lived in that. By and large, he was very, very forgetful, sometimes to a comedic degree. This is why when he began to arrive on time for weekly party meetings, cultural events, and even the smallest get-togethers in the town, it made many curious. One day, Oleg Markov asked Mat Matvey what inspired his change. I began writing these little notes to myself to remember, he said, blushing slightly, but they've been really helpful. When Oleg asked to see the Matevi... Omatve had handed a sheet of paper. On it was a detailed list of every event going on in the town for the next week, the date and time listed besides them. There were even little descriptions for it, which, to the surprise of Oleg, were surprisingly well written. Say, Matve, said Oleg, why don't you begin writing this for others, too? I'm sure people would find it useful. And with that, Matve, seeing the opportunity to apply himself to something, said he would do it. The next day, half the town received slips of papers near or on their property. All these papers were hastily scribbled by a detailed list of each event that was going down that week. At the bottom of the sheet was written, Mat Matve Nosov Reporter. Over the course of the next couple weeks, the newsletter grew from a small, simple piece of paper written the night before by one man, expanded to have multiple writers and at least five pages long, and printed with a jury rig machine. Every event had at least one reporter now, either being Matvey himself or volunteers. By the end of the first month, the newsletter had received the first official blessings of the local party organ, applauding it as proof that the workers can self-organize without the need of capital tyranny. A true man of the people, that Matvey. State press only with censored press? Oh boy. 
Now we get 1.23 every day. That's not nearly enough. And I'll, I do want to let you know, like I understand, and you, a lot of you guys said in the comments from the last video that there was an audio issue. Hopefully I've corrected it. I'm not really sure what in the last video why there was an audio issue at all. So I apologize for that. I That's the first time it's ever happened on the channel. So hopefully it does not happen again. Uh, like I said, that's I've never had that happen before. So I apologize. Uh, we can do stuff 69. It's nice and all, but... I'll read the next one. Together, a union together and equal. With the Republic's grip on the region almost fully consolidated, we must look at one one of the few pressing political issues that we have not accounted for, the treatment of the minorities within our borders. While many people are accepting of these new citizens, some look down on them and ra hold rather prejudiced views. We will create a new government body to help further the rights of the minorities to show the rival administrations to the East and West that we are the strongest Russia united as equals. And we'll have some coffee too. Affirmative action. And we have more stability. Look at that. But lose political power, but reduce our administrative strain. Not bad. Not bad at all. So 49.5. Ooh, research. I love the research so much. Do more research. I'm waiting for this to, uh, to get more stuff here because, yeah. And let's see. I want more civvies. So slightly. That's not bad. And slightly is pretty much 25. So let's give it another month before it's, so it can get cut down some more. And then we shall read Springtime for the Soviet People. Marx founded scientific socialism, Lenin taught the world how to practice it, and Stalin perfected it. Guided by the Marxist Leninist Stalinist ideology, the West Siberian People's Republic is a blossoming oasis in the post Soviet wasteland. Civil servants are inspired by the writings of Stalin to build a better, more efficient state, while party members are moved by its example and following his lead to defeat capitalism once for all. The Republic is being reshaped in Stalin's image and is becoming stronger for that reason with each and every passing day. More Max Factories in the state, please. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Even though we can't really build too much, especially when we do all these extra little modifiers or the five-year plan, so we'll see. We shall see. We're together, union and equal, and then we shall have springtime for the Soviet people. And, oh, by Dao, uh, abdicates. Okay, well... I think then we could probably do this one. So, continue the five-year plan. Thanks to the five-year plan, the Republic's industry is booming every day. Workers are pouring into factories across the nation, and machines are turning with energy as though they were living beings. Smokestacks are billowing from the energized pace that people are working at, and everywhere this productivity is translating into a renewed prosperity ordinary citizens haven't enjoyed since the great days of the Great Patriotic War. If we keep up the pace our workers are currently at, we'll be the greatest powerhouse in the post-Soviet lands. Yes, very good. We keep expanding and building, building, building. Oh, I don't like doing anti-air stuff. Oh, I'll do more gun stuff for now. Gun stuff. Lots and lots of gun stuff, my friends. Uh, my apologies about that. Usually, every time like there's a small little pause for like a few seconds, it's usually when I'm letting my cat out of my room because he doesn't like it as we're talking and like I'm making video. So, it's unfortunate. Quite unfortunate. Ooh. Increases the strain monthly. Okay, that's fine with me. Uh, 75... Slightly, 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 slightly. More infrastructure is not bad. I like the infrastructure. Slightly. Yeah, there's not much else we can do here except the slightly one, so. Uh, sure, why not? Give more infrastructure. 95, not bad. Not great, but not bad. Springtime, my friends. And actually, when's the next tech done? In about a month and a half, not bad. Of course, we're focusing on all the other stuff. We can't even make any civvies. Oh, so bad. So bad. It goes down by 22.5 every month. That's not bad. Keep expanding, expanding, expanding. <sighs> Springtime for the Soviet people into the future, my friends. Or, oh boy, what is going on here? Uh, let's see, the reforms are complete. <clears throat> There's never been a time in Soviet history when the developed forces of a nation were the strong and now all of fractured Russia trembles at our might. We just, now standing as the liberators of Russia's breadbasket, it is time we spread a revolution to the rest of the former Union to bring about new prosperity under the guiding hat of Kag Kaganovich's reforms. We succeeded in spreading our reforms throughout all of our people's republic and lands formerly owned by the weak reactionary warlords are now under the rightful command of Russia, her people, and strongly unified. We're united. Those who oppose the dictatorship of the proletariat have been dealt with as needed. The people work fervently for reunification, and now towns that were once insignificant dots on a map or industrial centers where steel turns into tools of the people for our new, from our new sturdy industrial base in West Siberia. The path of Russia's reunification is clear. First the petty squabbling Urals, and then the West Russias, where resistance to the path of the revolution will be stronger than ever. Comrades forward for the motherland for Kaganovich. Yura. 
Ora and the Ku. Lazar, I am Lazar Kaganovich, tapped his foot on the airplane floor, hastily explaining to a young official the importance of the next five year plan. The day is ruined. He thought as the craft landed and two men, Kudushev had better have a good reason for summoning me halfway across the country. The morning was fairly normal. Lazar adhered to his regular routine of a quick shower and breakfast before inspecting the new factories in the north. Everything was shattered when he received a report of unscheduled army movements followed by an unplanned trip to the party. The airplane door opened. Lazar rushed into the field where the five black cars awaited. Khrushchev exited, flanked by the armed NKVD officers. Before the chairman could react, the plane roared back to life and fled. Comrade Koganovich began Khrushchev as a soldier handcuffed Lazar. You are charged with incompetence and treason against a party. You've been found guilty by General Assembly this morning. The chairman was stuffed into the car's backseat, struggling to describe his confusion and rage. Nikita continued. I have been appointed chairman. Your tyranny will no longer haunt the people of Russia. The door slammed and Lazar Kaganovich was no more. Long live Comrade Khrushchev. Oh my goodness. Ah, so handsome. The corn man is here. Ha <laughs> ha. Uh, don't we love corn? If you love corn, please let me know in the comments below because corn is awesome. Ah, uh, I love it. Oh. Oh, this sucks. We can't. Uh, no security minister. Oh, it sucks. That really sucks. Always investing in R&D so we can get some more uh, bonuses to that. Yes, please. Spend cut. Good. Are we making any more divisions? Because we're going to need more divisions. Uh, make it four now. I just want to make sure, no matter what, when we go to war, that we'll do fine. Because these guys... Uh, oh, wait, no. These guys are 20s. These guys are what we want. Screw, the, screw that other group. There you go. That's what we want. Put them right on the front line there. There we go. All right. Civilian factories. Well, 22 slightly. That's fine. 97, not bad. And then, wheels of industry. Seeds of Soviet progress. More daily political power. Public higher education. Way more GDP costs. But let's go to the seeds of Soviet progress. We're not mere utopians who daydream idly about castles in the sky or make half-hearted moral arguments about the necessities of socialism. We are scientific socialists whose victory in the class conflict is guaranteed by superior knowledge of Marxist, Lenin, and Stalinist theory and the dialectic. To ensure that we stand victorious against our counter-revolutionary foes, we must develop our scientific and technological base, so that we are armed with the latest weaponry and equipped with the latest machinery. Anyone who wishes to be educated for however reason must be given the education they desire. New scientists, social theorists, and civil servants must be trained for a future directing the revolution. Only then will we truly live up to the name of scientific socialism. Look at all that. It goes 3.5% more GDP cost, which is god-awful, but we do get more taxable population, Academic base, monthly changes, was well research facilities, and poverty. Yes, please. The continuation of the five-year plan, though, my friends. It was a skeleton of metal and wood at first. Wispy beams and fragile supports stuck out at odd angles, prompting curious looks from the citizenry. Children played in tractors and dared each other to jump the gap to the third floor. Slowly, however, the co construct was assembled. Piece by piece, one day, workers entered, men and a few women. Dressed in simple, pristine jumpsuits, took their positions in preparation for the first day in the job, then the factory roared. Across the West Siberian People's Republic, the industrialization efforts yielded victory after victory. The people have jobs, the stores have goods, the productive forces are developed. The barren Siberian wasteland, once composed of a few cottage industries and farms, is resurrected by the blazing fires of production. Through the efforts of the people, the party and of course, Comrade Kaganovich. The revolution is advancing yet as planners and architects scurry through state offices, as mechanical beasts vomit progress into the air, as workers tear and slowly the new jumpsuits. This is only the beginning. None, no one can withstand the might of progress. Amen. Amen. Especially as I finish my coffee. Woo! Too bad we don't have another minister yet. Hopefully we get another one later on. But yes, now we're going to spend a lot more pee-pee and getting all this stuff done. Base, agricultural stuff. Uh, what is this one? Construction, weekly manpower. I think we're good on manpower for now. Stability, weekly stability might not be bad, but I think we can wait for all three of these. Nice. And, ooh. Academic base, research, revolutionary, revolution of thought and theory. Well, let's do illiteracy liquidation programs. After the collapse of the USSR, illiteracy in Russia spiked as centralized public education ceased to exist and getting food on the table today became more important than educating one's children for tomorrow. We must end this turn of events now and begin illiteracy liquidation programs to help educate the peasantry and the other lower classes who form the backbone of socialism. Every village must have their own school which with the children must attend regularly with a standardized socialist curriculum to teach them about skills, technology, and the world around them, and most importantly, the revolutionary future to come. Alright, so we got more here now. Nice. 
Oh, yes. Uh, agriculture, yes. Equipment, yes. We're going to be running out of political power here very soon, which is not very good. We definitely need more PP. 1.27, not bad. Uh, I would love to do this stuff and then this stuff. 65. Um, is, that, is it worth doing this one anymore? 25 every month. And eh, I'll do one more one. Oh, yeah. We're at 90. And we're still in that building, which sucks. Oh, we made another division, maybe. That's very nice. And then expand the institutes. Knowledge is the greatest weapon the revolution has, and the greatest kind of education is that of the university and institute. To ensure a new generation that can lead the revolution is properly trained, we must reopen universities for bureaucrats and civil servants and specialize in engineering, health, and economic institutes across the country. Where there were none before, new ones must be built under the tutelage of existing educational facilities. Most importantly, we must grant free education and lodging for all students to encourage education and learning among all walks of life. Very good. <clears throat> Honor the visionaries. Or a generation of workers. That's new revolution in thought and theory. Our socialism is called scientific for a reason. It is grounded on observation from the world around us and the formulation of new theory and practice based on these observations. However, the most important aspect of science is that it must be open to change and debate. Stalin built up his theories based on those of Lenin, who in turn based his thought on Marx. It is time we begin a new chapter in the history of Marxist, Lenin, and Stalinist ideology by encouraging free thought among the intelligentsia and writers and giving them the free ability to critique existing approaches to theory and formulation of new solutions to them within the bounds of reason. <coughs> Of course, yes, within the bounds of reason. Good, good, good. Oh, that's not good. Oh, I don't like that. I don't. Oh, we're still building up a little bit, which is kind of okay with me. Uh, Sixty uh, resource. Mm, reset our real populations. Well, oh, that's not bad. Oh, uh, you know what? I haven't tried this one yet. I would like to do this one, but it's probably too much administrative strain. So yeah, really, with two men, or maybe with you know a lot of nations. You really want to save up a lot of PP. Ooh, yeah, I'm going to do this one too. Industrial expertise is pretty good. It's not great, but it's not bad. Build, 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 build. And then we're going to do this one. More research speed, thank you. No, oh, we can put that one too, huh? Well, under the visionaries, or worker generations, we did all the left ones on this side, so I think we'll go with the left one here as well. Uh, it's right here. Honor the visionaries. The revolution will be guided by visionaries, the thinkers, scientists, and most of all, the theorists of Marxist, Leninism, Stalinism. To raise a new generation of great men and women who can lead the proletariat onto socialism, we must focus our educational programs on the science from geography to zoology. Critical thinking and creative solutions to problems must be emphasized by the curriculum, with those brilliant and innovative students given top priority in education. Most importantly, we must educate the children on Marxism, Leninism, Stalinism, and socialist thought that they may one day grow up and contribute to the development of the most vital field. Oh, and England defeats Wales. Another country fall into a prospective British Empire. Sounds quite reactionary. Cool. Anything else? Nope, we're good up there. Um, urban centers, we're at 13. Oh, 13 is not bad. Uh, let's do civilian stuff. It's only 25 political power, so. And we still can't really build too much, but whatever. I'm probably doing this, probably, honestly, oh, the joint iron's back. Probably incorrectly. Ah, eh, do it again, why not? 53, and then rural populations. Eh. It increases it severely. What is severely? Is that 50? I don't know. Let's let's wait maybe another month for that one then. And then we should do lessons from the Reclamation War. I do want that bonus. Ooh, that's not bad either. I'm going to go with the wheels of an industrial revolution. Every orthodox Marxist will tell you that the nation dependent on agriculture are poor and destitute, but industry is a path to socialism. The state presidium of TMN must be called up to determine the economic future of the state and how to best develop our industry to not only rebuild and reunify Russia under the banner of scientific socialism, but to build the groundwork for the Marxist, Leninist, Stalinist future. The fate of both Russia and the working class depends on the so choices made today. The rights for the Urals. <coughs> Excuse me. Happy 1967. Through the Great Ural Mountains. The traditional border between Europe and Asia, this great mountain range is critically important to reunification ambitions. In the aftermath of the West Russian War and the collapse of the WRRF, the regions left barely bereft of any central authority. Many communes and villages looked to either the city of Orenburg or the soldiers of the Ural League for protection. Our intelligence reports that others fell under the sway of the NKVD remnants in Magnogorsk or were sacked by Dilvanga's brigade. The rise in tensions after the end of the German terror bombing resulted in conflicts that have led to the region's current power structure. The Euros present both an opportunity as well as a threat to our nation. 
So using the era's resources and population would be a great boon to our cause, however. On the far side of the Urals, another unifier state claims its legitimacy as a true Russian government. Were this opponent to capture the Urals, they would be able to station troops on our side of the mountain range, threatening our western provinces. We must thus assert our prominence in the region through any way necessary. Our diplomats and generals have prepared to an array of tools to bring the Urals into our sphere of interest. It is projected that the side with the best combination of prestige, diplomatic success, and military intimidation will be able to be the first to tip over local elites in accepting unification. Were the diplomatic option to fall or fail, military intervention must remain an option. An op option that our eastern rivals are not likely to accept easily. The rest of the Urals is upon us. We will triumph over our west Russian rivals and integrate another part of the shattered Russia to our growing nation, a new theater, which will be probably pretty good to do. So, the Euros, huh? Oh, my goodness. Uh, the rest for the Euros, we can invest, I uh, guess. How strong are these guys? Because they can just take them out, maybe. Oh, Soslav, yes. Soslav. They have a lot of manpower like us. They have up to 30. Oh, boy, that's more divisions than we have. Um, low? Yeah, we'll do low for now. Influence current... Oh, they have a lot more influence than us. I've never done this one before, so... Go high. Um, point two a day, huh? Oh boy. Eight point eight. How do we get it higher? Our influence is high. Twelve G's, a wheeze. Infrastructure reserve is nice. Let's keep going with that one. I don't know if there's anything else we can do really right now. They're neutral. Neutral, neutral. So, I guess we'll read the next one then. Uh, framework for development. An industrial revolution cannot be carried out according to the idle whims of a few selfish individuals. That was a mistake of Western capitalists. We must summon our top economic planners to come up with a discreet plan for industrialization, a plan that all workers in the country will carry out for the good of all. This plan must feature a comprehensive details on the procedures the workers of the country will carry out and what equipment will be used by whom in each plant. This way, we can ensure not only to increase our infrastructure and national growth, but to improve the quality of life for all of our people. Good. 25, huh? Civilian infrastructure. Um, consumer goods. Are we still being able to build anything yet? No, not too much. Um, hmm. I guess go for more infrastructure, I guess. I love infrastructure, so. Is there anything else we can invest in here? It doesn't look like we can. They have so much influence. How do they get that much influence? But we do have 17 divisions now, which is pretty nice. And we do have two tank divisions, so that'll come in hand. Well, I guess one tank division, really. But, uh, hmm, strength and agricultural control. The Khrushchev plan. Yeah, we gotta go with the Khrushchev plan. It would make sense for us to not to do it, so. Nikita Khrushchev proposes an end to the large centralization policies of our current collective farms are run by. Instead of all the farms are in a given region being dependent on machine tractor stations where all the farming equipment like tractors and threshing machines are stored, he proposes each individual farm be given its own farming equipment. This decentralization policy has several benefits. It puts more of the well-being of the farm and its outputs in the hands of the farmers, giving them an incentive to better perform, while we no longer have to worry about the expenditures for providing services to the farms, which is not bad. 44. Jeez Louise. Discredit opponent in the Euro League. Yes. We're no longer to be discredited. Um, is that good to do? I don't know. Civilian stuff? Sure, why not? I love the R&D, so let's keep going with that. Still not being able to build anything, which sucks. Develop urban centers. Oh, rural populations. Uh, if we do that, it increases. Oh, so severely is... Whoa. 55. Severely is 55. So that's that's interesting to know. That's actually really, really good to know. Anything else here? Doesn't look like it. Infantry anti-tank is nice. And I'll grab some more of that. That'd be good. And after the Khrushchev plan, the tested approach. Rehabilitate the Siberian plan. Um, I do want more civvies. Military factories are nice, but I want more civvies. So. Rehabilitate the Siberian plan. Which is on the left side. So much, so far, much of the West Siberia consists of nothing but barren wasteland and swamp, and people poor and isolated. However, <clears throat> appearances can be deceptive. Beneath the surface, the earth of Siberia is rich in resources that could fuel the most powerful of empires: oil, gasoline, lead, copper, and many more. The first step to prosperity for every worker in the country is to construct a variety of mines and wells and known resource deposits, as well as plants to process them into industrial material. Though our exploitation of natural resources will be small in the beginning, these shall be the foundations that that the monuments of the socialist future will be built on. 
Good, good, good. Discredit people in Orenburg? Yes. Why not? Um, these are receptive, huh? That's not good. High art. Oh, that is so bad. Oh, but this. Oh, that's so much better. Look at that. You're really good. They're neutral, neutral. So our current influence is 42. Theirs is 12. As 8 up here, and it's 19. Okay, that's interesting. That's not bad. 65. Let's keep going with this stuff. Military factory construction speed, which is okay for now. Keep building, building, building. Discredit people in the Euro League. Hey, look, 17 versus 12. Nice. Oh, okay, cool. Um, agricultural stuff. Screw it, why not? 31.5 every month, huh? Not bad. And redouble the urbanization campaign. The backbone of socialism is not the peasantry, but the urban proletariat who toil in the great factories and boundaries of the city. If we're to build socialism in West Siberia, we can no longer remain a rural society. Dotted only occasionally with a few small cities. We must become an urbanized nation, its cities teeming with life and the activity of the industrial proletariat. We can encourage families to move to the city by granting them incentives. Like reduced rent, tax relief, and preference for jobs, we can also pe penalize a few reactionary peasants who stubbornly cling to their primitive ways with extra fees. Using carrots and sticks, two men shall be transformed from a backward nation to a shining example of urban social society to come. Great. And I wanted to pause it just because I want to make sure we keep spending for civilian stuff. That's going to be really, really, really important for us in my mind. 53 is not bad. Uh, civilian infrastructure? Why not? 27, 13, 26 is not good. Oh boy. Yeah. Hmm. Next research will be done in a month and a half, which is not bad. Redouble. And then... Oh, do we have another one here? Launch. Discrediting them. No. Okay. Uh, and r and I like that one a lot. It just Research is so good to have. It's so good to have more research. We need more PP, though. The riches of Siberia, though. Our location in Siberia is both a blessing and a curse, so though Siberia is one of the most resource-rich re regions in the world, blessed with oil, ore, minerals, and much more, it is also one of the most isolated regions in the world, consisting of largely of remote villages with few opportunities to exploit these riches for the good of man. If we are to build socialism in Siberia, we must expand our infrastructure to include harvesting these materials for the processing of goods our workers may consume. Prospectors must be sent out to the remote regions, mines and oil refiners must be built on significant resource deposits, and processing plants must be built so we may in turn these raw materials into usable products. Good idea. Uh, let's see. Current influence is really bad. 0.7. Oh, this is really bad. Uh, we have to just go probably go to war with them. Mm. Redouble urbanization programs. Rich of Siberia. Cool. And I, I'm just kind of buying time so we can make more divisions. Up to 37 is really not good for us. They have light infantry. So they have a lot of divisions. Doesn't mean they're any good though. Hmm. Aligned, receptive, crap, that's not good. Hmm. I don't know how to do this at all. Like, seriously, how are they aligned? What, why are they still neutral? How do we increase relations? We Oh, just, oh. That's how we do it? That's stupid. Yeah, I'll probably just kill them off. Large scale exercises, that would be good to do. Hmm, resource, research, research urban centers. And I'll just wait for another month. When's the next uh, division going to be made? Uh, when's the next divisions? You know what? We're just going to launch military intervention. I don't like this. I don't like this. They're aligned. Screw it. We're just going to go straight to war with them. You want them? Alright, you can have them. You're going to die, though. Because we should be able to get this tank, at least one more tank out. Which is Siberia. And we'll be able to get these four divisions out, which should prove to be good enough for us. A glance of Bukharin, export focus, or the orthodox approach. As much as I want to do this one, the glance of Bukharin. The WSPR is a state built on Marxist, Leninist, Stalinist ideology. However, there are times when we must be pragmatic and break with theory in the face of practice. Ever since the collapse of the Soviet Union, the factories of Siberia have sat silent. The machines slowly rusting away. The workers and peasants have lived in a state of squalor and poverty, which Orthodox Stalinist economic policies have done little to alleviate. Some of our officials advocate a return to Orthodox MLB economic policies of free markets and foreign investments on the grounds that they can accelerate the forces of production in a country in ways non-capitalist modes of production cannot, given the lack of industrial development within our borders. So, I don't like this. Yeah, decreasing, like, how are we supposed to know what we need to do here? Our current influence? Like, how was I supposed to know that we need to, oh, just spend your influence to do stuff? That's, I don't like that. I don't like that at all. 
So they're aligned. And so basically what you lose if you don't know what you're doing. Hmm. Not fun. That's not a lot of fun. But with this one, this doesn't seem like it's very good. This whole Siberian plant thing seems like a waste of time. Seems like a complete waste of time, really. Uh, yeah, I don't like it that much. Mm. Yeah, because you, you can't build jack squat when it's all the consumer goods gone. You don't get anything out of this. You're, it feels like you get almost nothing out of doing this. And so, I mean, I don't like this one. It seems pretty, pretty lackluster. Pretty darn lackluster. But the next stage awaits. Though Siberia may have begun as a destitute pack, water through proper application of Marxist Leninist Stalinist theory, our nation is metamorphosed into a shining example of socialism in the post W or W USSR world, proving that the socialist experiment has not yet failed. The factories are bustling with activity as workers man the machines day and night. The fields of collective farms are golden with crops ripe for harvesting, and the countryside is dotted with mines, oil wells, and railroads. However, now is not the time to rest upon our laurels. We must expand what we already have and begin the next stage of our economic growth. Good. Very good. And we have those divisions out yet. Uh, how many more weeks do we have until then? Oh, we have about we're halfway there, so. You know what? They want to be aligned, so be it. I'll butcher every single one of them. And do we have planes? That's most that's a very, very important thing to ask. Yeah, so this whole thing with this whole five year plan, it, it, at least in my opinion, for it seems like it's garbage. It's not really worth doing. Because we wasted so much time trying to produce and get that stuff done that we can be, be producing more factories. More, more, more factories just manually. Because you get wow, you get one more factory after 60 days, you could probably make that factory within like two months, you know, just by building it. So this is not very good in my mind. But you know what? Maybe I'm wrong. Some people will disagree with me, but from what I've seen here, it's not very good. It's really just not very good. You can do this. 20% consumer goods. That's extreme. That's an extreme amount. <laughs> That's not worth it. That's just not worth it. That's not worth it at all. But oh well. So I'm pretty much done with that stuff. Hopefully, maybe. And I'll do it if we have enough time, but at least this is, my, this is my first attempt in this campaign with that, so. Lessons from the Reclamation War. It was of the fires of the Reunification Wars that the Red Army of the West Siberian People's Republic was forged, and it's time to adopt innovations and practices discovered during these conflicts into formal military doctrine. The officers who came up with the daring new tactics and cunning strategies to overcome this many liberal and reactionaries besieged us will be given the first priority when hiring instructors at military academies. And even the bureaucrats who learn how to conserve and distribute supplies under pressure will be prompted or promoted to the top management. The one constant of the dialectic is change, and those who do not learn this lesson and adopt will perish. Oh, we've got the other divisions out. Nice. Good, 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 good. Good, good, good. Oh, we actually have some cast. That's good. Not much, but it'll work. And that's it for that group. I'm not going to cut down the military austerity anymore. We're going to keep spending this, though. So. Yeah, look at that. We can't build anything. So, But if you like to read about industrial expertise, please go right ahead. Pretty good. Waste of time, this one is. Just a gigantic waste of time. I'm, I, I just don't want to do that anymore when it's just so bad. Uh, we really could use another tank division here. Oh, we lost his uh, Talus Arms Plant. Whatever. Go here. If you can, move fast enough. Come on, guys. Are you going? Oh, you're not... Oh, you guys are going on. Okay. That's interesting. All right. Remember the anti-the anti-fascist war. Elevate proven officers. The bedrock in which the Red Army is built upon is the old Red Army, the Patriotic War. But its brick and mortars are its officers who lead the militant workers into battle. Over the course of the Unification Wars, many new and promising officers, fresh, fresh from the cadet schools, will display great tactical brilliance, cunning, and bravery in the field of battle. By promoting these promising youths, not only will we gain a generation of innovative but experienced commanders to lead the revolution to come, but to show the men and women of the People's Republic that anyone may become a hero if they are dealing and intelligent enough. Well, if they're not going to come over and fight us, then whatever. I'm going to come and kill these guys off first. Kill these sons of guns. Get back to the Taust. Good, 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 good. Because if they're not going to go to war with us, well, that's good. Wow, you guys suck. The tanks just got awful. Oof. Infantry's so bad, too. What the heck is going on? They're 40 combat with. You're going to force the attack and win. I'm not going to just play games here and just, you know, let you watch you die. You're going to have to win now. Now. Yeah, that's pretty bad. 40 combo with infantry is sucking, sucking a hard one right now. Oh, boy. No, thank you. No, thank you. Um, so, yeah, this is garbage. Five-year plan, straight trash.
Oh, we got. Th uh, we need to get this capital next. Elevate proven officers. That's good. Repurpose NKVD units. The steadfast men and women of the NKVD are the most are the protectors of the revolution and the People's Republic. Few people outside its ranks, save for the party itself, are more devoted to the cause of socialism than they. But their numbers are far in excess of their stated goal of protecting the People's Republic from its enemies within. This forming field of the NKVD troopers to aid their Red Army comrades in the battle of reactionary arm enemies, without is an ideal use of their manpower. Forming a corps of ideologically pure, disciplined shock troopers. The forces of the NKVD can be an invaluable hammer, smashing the counter revolutionaries into the dust without mercy, mercy or second thought. If they're allowed on the field that is see when is this done that takes too long yeah i'm not interested in that five year plan i've already said enough times i've said it more than enough times my thoughts on it good they will die and come on how many men have we lost eight thousand oh, not bad eight thousand versus thirty four thousand and they should be dead right now good die you piece of the garbage go 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 if you'd like to you just go right there and kill them all. There you go. Nice. Yeah, IFVs, not very good. What the? What the? What uh, What the heck happened here? Are, why are we at peace? Oh, we can actually get, get these guys. That'd be good, but... Wait, why are we at peace now? What? I didn't, I didn't sign up for a white peace. No. Oh. Why are they... What? What? I don't care if they're... I wanted to go to war with you guys. What the heck? Now that is stupid. If that's the case, we're gonna do this. There you go. That doesn't make any lick of sense. What the heck? I don't care if they're puppet. Just go to war with them anyways. Wow, that is stupid. Oh well. And let's go and grab uh, your uh, Vasily Kuznetsov. Yes, please. There you go. No, wow, they actually took Onega, but it's now a uh, demilitarized zone, huh? Um, sure, why not? And you know what? Screw. It. What the hell happened? Where are my tanks? Oh, you guys are definitely not 40 combat widths. Uh, let's go do this one. There you go. No wonder we were running so well. No wonder. Infantry and infantry, good. Um. We definitely don't have enough tanks for this stuff, right? Yeah, IFVs, main battle tanks. It's alright. I'm not sure what happened here, but okay. I want my tank divisions. Uh, where did my tanks go? <laughs> yeah, they, they just died or something. What the heck? Large scale exercises. We do want to save one of these. Oh, no, we already got the bonus. Ah, I guess I if you break, that'd be nice. Well, at least we took out one of them. That's good, I guess. Go ahead and train, I suppose, for now. Oh, well, alright then, that is very odd. If that's the case, we can probably just combine these two, maybe. Or just get rid of this one. There you go. Improved academic base. If you like to read about that, please go right ahead. It's something to be celebrated. Yeah. Oh, the greatest story never told. If you like to read about that, please go right ahead. But we're going to go with... Oh. Academic base, research facilities... NKPD units, nice. Remember the anti-fascist war. The Red Army of Workers and Peasants traced its lineage to the original Red Army that notably sacrificed themselves in the struggle against fascism so many years ago, but to avoid their fate, we must analyze their failures and learn how to overcome them. The battles and campaigns of the war must be analyzed down to the last detail and the mistakes they made and identified and corrected in future doctrine. However, even the tactics and doctrines of the fascists must be studied at length, not only to prepare ourselves for future wars against these aggressors, but to learn what they did right and adopt the practices. When the fascists come knocking at the door, they will find their foes have learned to fight their fire with fire. Cool. So, strain is 25, five year plan. What a waste of time. And uh, discredited points. That's such a waste of time. There's so much things a waste of time here. What the heck? Like, is there a bonus at the end if you do the first five year plan? If there's not a bonus at the end, this is a complete waste of time and waste of resources. It's so much better to do this stuff than this stuff. You cannot mechanize or industrialize fast enough. So, we're going to do this one. And I want to save my stuff for, save PP for. Poverty, as well as army professionalism, so. If that's the case, I guess we'll cut down the military budget for now. I mean, it's not bad, but... But look at that. We can still at least build for now. At least we're building something. Uh, nothing else here. That's fine. And remember the anti-fascist war with an 
an army for the new struggle. The battles of the future will not be fought with bolt action rifles and medium tanks, but as, as was a fascist invasion of the motherland, both assault rifles, main battle tanks, helicopters, and technologies we have yet to name. To ensure the victory of the socialist revolution and the class struggle to come, we must study and adopt these new technologies the ways of the war they entail. Although regular relations with the world beyond Russia are difficult to maintain, we must do our best to obtain observers to friendly countries with advanced methods of war already, learn their new tactics and strategies, and adopt them for the Red Army of workers and peasants to the best of our ability. Very good. So it is still 1968. So happy new year and we can do that stuff yet we can do that stuff let's get some better artillery yes we love artillery oh we got some more yes please hiring for instructors poverty relief and we can't afford anything else wow oh, we've got no more manpower that sucks 25 wait agriculture strain is currently 25 is this supposed to go down yeah support weapons are nice very good and then we shall do development of the soldiers, army XP gain, revisit the armor core, legacy of the aviators. Let's do that one. Perhaps the most tra most, more traumatic than the fascist invasions of the bombing campaigns the Germans invaders inflicted on the survivors for years after the war. No settlement has not been attacked by these iron vultures, and no family within our borders have not lost a member to the fascist bombs. However, if we build up a powerful air force and strong anti-air defenses in our cities, we'll never have to fear a bombing campaign like that of the fascists again. At last, the workers and peasants of Siberia may sleep safely knowing that the Marxist, Leninist, Stalinist aviators will protect the skies above them. Nice. Uh, if you'd like to read about this, please go right ahead. We can attend the Rykov conference just to see what would happen, so... Let's see what happens. Alright, let's see. Wait, so it doesn't go down? That's so stupid. It doesn't go down by 25? Yeah, that's not very good. But, maybe I'm wrong, but who knows. Um, uh, bonus. I love the bonus for industry. It's so helpful. But we don't really need that right now. Let's grab some more machinery stuff. Uh, reunification of the Russias. Extra influence. I guess we do that. How do we do this one? It has to be 69. Okay, so we got another year. That's not bad. And how is our stockpile of stuff? Let's do this one too. Nice. So we need, we got enough anti-tank. Artillery's not looking very good, so we need more artillery now. Artillery and tanks, that's pretty common. Basic IVs, we're done with you. And artillery, we need way more of that. And tanks looking not too bad, actually. Fighters looking okay. I think we're kind of doing okay with our stuff, currently. 21 division still, two of you guys, that's fine. Obviously not nearly enough of what we need, but whatever. And then we'll do the Siberian Air Fleet. Other the Rakhav Conference. Ooh. Excellent news, the Rykov Conference has been a splendid affair. The parties invited were cordial and honest, as old entities were swept beneath the tide of global revolution. The minor disputes that occurred were quickly settled by the conference chairs, and on the whole, the meeting was both productive and enjoyable. At the conference's in indication, it appeared that the ideological force of socialism will once again return to the global scene. Let the worldwide enemies of the proletariat and popular justice tremble before the awesome power of the allied socialist nations. The international ideal unites the human race. The creation of the Siberian Air Force is underway, but thus far are relying on antiquated aircraft from the anti-fascist war and airfields with decades obsolete and infrastructure and locations no longer of strategic importance. To truly rule the skies over Russia, we must expand and develop what infrastructure and equipment we already have. Ordering construction workers to build new airfields with updated equipment, while existing uh, factories can be reordered to build war plants and the machinery to manufacture them. It may take some time, but in due course, the Siberian Air Fleet shall become a wonder of not only Russia, but of the world as well. And we can only get 1.29 every single day, which is not bad, but not great. A question of expediency. Air Marshal Roman Ivanov sat at his desk, two lists sitting before him, columns and rows extensively extending endlessly, filled with names and professional typeface, no doubt created by some be little beady-eyed freak in the security department. He sat rubbing his eyes. The problem seemed so daunting, so large, and yet at its core, within reduced to its simplest components, it was actually quite simple. The Free Aviators, not only a socialist but practical apolitical body that did its best over the course of 20 years to protect the people of Russia from German bombers who plagued the broken, battered country, have been swallowed by the military peacefully enough. They had accepted the rule as a better alternative to the anarchy that harmed Russia, but the problem wasn't their competence, which no self-respecting man or woman could deny, rather as a question of politics. Romana, Roman received word from the high up that Lazar and his lackeys didn't like a lot of the aviators, not enough to purge them, no, they were too popular for that, but just to prevent them from gaining any real power or influence in the nascent Air Force, and so created the conundrum. Surely he promote the names on the left list, a less competent but more politically safe option of figures, or the right list, the aviators, consequences be darned. Choices, choices, and after several hours he decided, the aviators? The lackeys. Let's go with the aviators. We like the aviators here. If you'd like to read about better industrial equipment, please go right ahead. That's not too bad. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Uh, let's do returning to the world next. 
Thus far, most of our foreign affairs efforts have been focused on the reunification of Russia, but the time has come to seek international recognition of the world stage. Although the world beyond our borders is filled with capitalists and reactionaries of all stripes, we must come up with a concrete foreign policy that balances both upholding MLS ideology and the realities that we face. Although the process of choosing a final path to take will be a long and arduous one, and not everyone will be satisfied with the compromises we must make, it is imperative that we now choose. Pretty much. Pretty much. And we're out of manpower. Gosh darn it. Eh, still not too bad, though. Alright, let's see. We could use more manpower now. Agriculture. Hey, let's do some more agriculture so we can core stuff more quickly. Yeah, it's stuck, it's stuck at 25. Yeah, I don't know. I think the five year plan needs a rework. They don't need a rework. Oh, uh, let's see. Uh, engineers. Better engineers would be pretty good. 68. Let's grab some better guns. That'd be probably pretty smart. And concurrent fronts. We'll do supply chain reinforcements, which isn't super great, but it does give us infiltration assault, so. The tactic is not too bad. Cool. And then revisit the Armored Corps. Since the defeat of the revisionist Bukharinists in 1940s, the mecha mechanized troops that fight in the wake have been equipped with vehicles little better than tractors, leftover American Lendley's vehicles, and even building a few prototypes based on those in the Army archives. We must adopt the new powerful infantry fighting vehicle design of the nations beyond the Russian frontier that can both protect its troops from any possible harm and deal out large amounts of damage. This new IFV shall be Russian and socialist in nature, which will not only do what the others can, it should be produced cheaply by any team of proletarians with the right equipment, and can, can drive many leagues on the right a rugged Russian terrain while conserving energy, and take any damage and still keep fighting like a true son of the motherland. Very good. Very, very good. The Spectre. Uh, the Spectre is haunting Russia. The German Luftwaffe cannot eradicate it. A holy alliance of fascists, reactionaries, and capitalists cannot exorcise it. It cannot be undone by fl men of flesh or machines of steel. The Spectre has begun to look far beyond our artificial borders. It trawls the dark continent of Europe, invading German police spies and SS officers. It slithers among Asian rice fields where indigenous workers slave for Japanese corporations. It crawls through Africa, inspiring dreams of a free continent. It flies above South American jungles and watches for the tendrils of imperialism. It hides in the Union halls and factories of North America, subverting the greatest fortress of capital. The Spectre is haunting the world, and the world is terrified indeed. Our state is but a wisp of the Spectre, acting as a single soldier in a global class war. Its role cannot be overstated, however, as an example to the international proletariat of real working socialism, it fa falls to us to reach out to the like-minded mo movements, oppose reactionaries who threaten the revolution, and bring the world closer to communism. Workers of the world unite. Goodbye. And don't even bother me with that stuff. Let's see. Eh, we don't have enough for that yet. That's fine. We still need more manpower. We could raise this so we could get more manpower, but we do have 25 divisions. Oh, they just straight up integrated them. Wow. They have the 25 divisions. So this is going to be a really tough war for us. An incredibly tough war, which is going to be really bad for us. Because especially with no manpower. Mm, do that. You'll have enough strength for now. But just barely. Oh, let's see. Actually, what is it going to get higher mass mechanization? Oh, we'll get it done very, very soon. In which we get better consumer goods and more monthly population, which is not bad. And the IS tank. Armored warfare has come a long way since the anti fascist war. The queen of the battlefield is the main battle tank, which combines the firepower of a heavy tank with the mobility of a medium tank, and it's time we build our own main battle tank. Larger, heavier, more devastating than anything seen on the field, we will name this new tank the Iosef Stalin tank after the great Marxist Leninist thinker since Marx himself and the legitimate successor to Lenin. Both reactionaries and revisionists alike will know the true fear of Marxist Leninism Stalinist ideology when facing it on the battlefield. Uh, offers Sasak Sol Stantis. If you'd like to read about this, please go right ahead. But you know what? We'll take it. We will take it. We will take the status, and hopefully we can use it and abuse it. There we go. Can I withdraw things? I'd like to withdraw. Withdrawals from the development funds are unlocked after we are running a deficit. Or Oh, that sucks. I clicked it anyways. Non-eligible members, huh? Join the Scientific Bureau. That's kind of cool. Too bad we're probably going to kill each other. Mutual nap? Oh, non-aggression pact? Yeah, that's not going to work for us here. Anti-tank stuff. Nice. Scientific funding. Research. Industrial stuff. Equipment. Yeah, let's do that one. Yeah, more land attack would be very beneficial for us. And we're out of PP. Peaceful coexistence. The revolution does not wait. Condemning them. Uh, denounce fascist idealism. Thatcher's there. A nod to the West. Let's do a peaceful coexistence. So we choose the love path for everything here. There will come a time when the workers of the world, led by the true party of Lenin, will rise up against the bourgeoisie oppressors, armed with a Marxist, Leninist, Stalinist ideology, and with history on their side. The fury of the proletariat will obliterate the capitalist system that held them in chains. The, today is not that day, but if you'd like to read about better agricultural methods, please go right ahead. Indeed, we are the only Marxist, Leninist, statist 
state on Earth, sell on a state on Earth. And very few nations are communists, much less those whom ideological purists are willing to work with. Although it is not the most politically correct uh, option, working with capitalist states would be able to quickly make the short work of the biggest threats, such as the fascists of Germany and Japan. The revolution can always be fermented at a later date, after all. Very cool. All right, propaganda. Weekly manpower would actually probably be pretty okay for us, but let's keep improving ourselves here if we can. Industry is going to be important. A comedy in four parts. So what does the boss want us to do? He wants us to fool around with a bunch of different model tanks just to see what works best. And what? Explosions. Uh, Pavel? Yes, Vladimir. Shouldn't the tank have a caliber gun in the front? Not according to the designs before the war. Well, what happens if a Nazi gets on top? Lie back and just think of Russia. 30 minutes later. Vlad? Yes, Pavel? Are the Jets supposed to look that way? Um, just... Uh, put them all, uh, put them on upside down, don't you? Didn't you? Just shut up and help me take them off one hour later. I must say, Vladimir, it does look nice. Yes, thick plates, heck, it reminds me a bit of the Panzers during the war, at least from the concept. It does, comrade. And the cannon, gosh darn it, it would be fun to send a shell straight at one of those Nazi dudes, of course. And you said this is meant to be a frontline material? They're tough, but I don't know if they'll survive in high mobility war zone. Eh, that's a general's problem. Choo choo, want to get something to drink tonight? Of course, Pavel. Of course. Artillery still is needed. Oh, good God. Oh, there goes those guys. Goodbye. Uh, just in case, we're going to cut this down a little bit more. Uh, we're going to need all the guns that we have currently, though. Anti-tank, we can cut that down way down, too. That would be good. Oh, not... That, tanks are not doing too badly, though. Not too badly. And then, development for the soldiers. Most of our soldiers are still wearing uniforms and equipment from the anti-fascist war. Impressive by the standards of Russian unification struggle, but laughably obsolete compared to the armies outside Russia already. Even nations of moderate size elsewhere in the world are adopting new and advanced equipment. Like camouflage and body armor, even for the most basic of infantrymen. Adopting them for our own troops will not only give us a vast edge against reactionary warlords along our borders, but also guarantee the armies of Marxism, Leninism, Stalinism victory against the capitalists, who will save the world beyond the frontiers of Russia. And then we'll finish this up with Lieutenant de Slatos. After the collapse of the USSR and its revisionists, Colonel Klashnikov and Slatos created a new and revolutionary weapon, the AK-47, to arm the post-Russian successor states. However, it's been decades since the day the rifle was introduced and is beginning to show its existence, uh, or show, beginning to show its age. However, if our gunsmiths were to examine the strengths of the AK-47 and build a new social assault rifle with the most modern technology available to us, it could be a powerful advantage over both immediate and future opponents. It would be a killing machine honed by scientific analysis of its design and an awe-inspiring symbol of the proletarian fury through the workers who wield it. I don't understand why we get the unification songs for the UK when we're not playing the UK. That makes no sense. Nice. Special presence. Pavel Nokikov, Novikov was cleaning his old war in Mosin when his squad leader asked to see him. Well, this in itself wasn't unusual. What made Pavel uncomfortable when he asked what, that the rifle left where it was, saying it would be dealt with later. Typically, Pavel didn't get nervous, but as he was led to the bunker house, his comrades left, and all of them unarmed and sitting in chairs in a circle, just as clueless as he was. It sent him on, sent him on edge. The squad leader stood up, a large bag in hand, staring down at them in a judging manner. Comrades began the squad leader, as boys deep in guttural, which made Pavel want to stand up straight, up and in attention. You spent your entire careers as defenders of the revolution using the same weapons used by those who came before. They have worked to our benefit, but as the march, march of social progress continues, so must... Uh, material progress likewise. He threw open the bag on the ground in the middle of the circle, poking out where what seemed like dozens of rifle barrels. These are your rewards for protecting the revolution, comrades, enjoy. Pavel looked at the squad mates, the nervousness replaced with curiosity. Pavel bent, then bent down, pulled out a new fresh rifle just off the assembly line, it looked like. Then, or to then, Pavel began to wonder the rifle get range was open today. It's my rifle, but many like it, but this one is mine. Or, this is my rifle, but many like it, but this one is mine. Uh, I prefer the. That's not much political power, but it. That's not bad for infantry weapons, but this will come in handy more later on, so. Cool. And instead of just doing that one, we need that one. And we'll do that one, that one, that one. Uh, actually, let's do this up here first. And then we'll do boom, 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 boom. There you go. Build. More building, more building, more building, more building. Supply chain reinforcements. Cool. And we'll do, finish it off. More military factor construction speed, which is okay. Not great, but, not, but okay. Contact the Cossacks? Sure. The calamity that overtook the Soviet Union following the Nazi invasion did not restrict itself to Russia proper. The Central Asia's SSRs were beset with instability, even though they were not exposed to combat, with the Kazakh SSR in particular splitting into warlord states. The communist government still exists, however, and in a diminished form, and while our Kazakh comrades deserve to be supported in their struggle, while we've been distracted by our own wars for some time, the situation stabilized and stabilized enough to begin contacting aligned governments outside of our own borders. From here on out, our government will seek to open lines of communication with the Kazakhs, building the foundation for what should be prosperous and mutually beneficial future relations. Not bad. Spending more money, so be it. And, ooh, we need 5,000 more manpower. Uh, we'll do it that this time, I suppose. Construction, that's okay. Research facilities is next, though. 
1.44, better research facilities. Okay, then. I really agree about that. Please go right ahead. We lose some political power. Outdated research facilities. That's not good. Oh, that is very not good. But we'll get there soon enough. Nice. Good, good, good. Improved anti-tank will come in handy. And support Central Asia. Let's do a nod to the West. Historically, the capitalist nations of the Soviet Union have had rocky relations. The October Revolution has... I was viewed with the utmost suspicion by the British, French, and the U.S., who intervened on behalf of the reactionary forces. Now the fascism is sent, uh, ascendant, and the U.S. stands alone as the only surviving liberal great power, the situation is very different. Although many of our differences are irre irreconcilable, the consequences of the rule of different class interests, and there's one thing that we can agree upon. Fascism is and remains the greatest threat of all of mankind, and we must put our differences aside to smash it. Consequently, we will promptly reopen diplomatic relations with the Organization of Free Nations and embark upon the task of building an anti-fascist coalition. Very good. Very, very good. More defensive breakthrough. Thank you. And, yes, better guns. Guns for the workers. Oh, we actually have a little bit of that. Not bad. Oh, we, we took that stuff from the other groups, but not bad. Not bad. And now to the West, and which we will do Southern cooperation. The communication lines have been established. Russian and Kazakh communist governments have now built ties for the first time since the West Russian War. Our activities can't stop at merely contacting the Kazakh SSR, however. Both of our territories have been severely damaged by years of war and economic strain. As communists, we must have solidarity as well as more. A powerful polity, the West Siberian People's Republic has a responsibility to aid its partner. Trade, economic assistance, and transfers of military supplies between the West Siberia and the Kazakh SSR will commence shortly, strengthening our two republics and the bond between them. We can only hope that the future political situation will allow the Kazakh SSR and Russia to reunify sooner rather than later. A Soviet hello. Now look at all that uh, political power we got. Nice. And oh, we have more divisions. Yes, yes, yes. We gonna need way more divisions. Holy cow. Anything here? Nope. That's fine with us. Tanks? Yes. And actually, it would be beneficial if we just came over here first with the tanks. And at least cut off one division down here. That'd be good. So, mm -hmm. We're going to continue with drawing. Development fund. Wait, we expand that to my... Oh, water. Nice. <laughs> Use that, their money, to help us out. Love it. And we've got quite a few weeks for that, which is fine. How are we doing here? Look at that. It's so much better. So much better doing it like this than the, the, the Siberian plan. What a waste of time. But the flag's pretty nice that we have. Uh, there's uh, Southern Cooperation. Congratulate compatible governments. And in another time, the world socialist bloc would be great enough in size that we could oppose and ruthlessly criticize every capitalist government on Earth and ours. The socialist movement is still small and vulnerable, dwarfed in all areas by the fascist behemoth. We need to build ties not only with communist parties, but with any government that has proven itself receptive to the anti-fascism and left-wing principles. Neon non-Marxist socialists. The left-wing parties of bourgeois democracies and other potential, though imperfect, allies of the struggle for workers and against fascism deserve our praise. In the spirit of building a broad popular front against reactionary tyranny, a time for ideologically pure unity will come after the beliefs of Hitler and Mussolini are gone for good. Open up diplomatic relations with governments around the world. Nice. Get more anti-tank and hard attack. Very good. Uh, good, good, good. And we're saving our PP for now because we don't have to core stuff later on. So, yeah. Selling cooperation. Construction speed goes up. Oh yeah, we'll do that one too. You know what? Build faster. Build, 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 build. Nice. And the next tech should be done within a few days. Not bad. And support Central Asia. Central Asia has been shattered, and not all the new states therein are aligned with the socialist values. The Kazakh territories are rife with reactionary warlordism. The government of the Turkmen and Uzbek SSRs have abandoned socialism completely. For the Soviet system to reestablish itself within Central Asia, we must build ties with those states still compatible with their views and tilt the balance of power within their favor. The Tajik SSR and the Seoul Republic still completely under control of the communists. It's a clear choice for an alliance. Kirig's SSR, while predominantly a military regime, is potentially flexible enough to bring back into the fold. As we are still too weak to make a play for the annexation of Central Asia, Expanding our geopolitical influence will have to do in the meantime. Pretty good. So we're done with our land doctrine, finally. Done with the land doctrine. And artillery is still looking pretty much good to do right now. Working propagandas. Let's withdraw some more money if we can. It's only 10 million, so. Look at that, 10 million. Thank you. <laughs> uh, happy 1969, everyone. Hope you're having a great, great year. Let's grab some of this. More support weapons. Very good. And we have 26 regular infantry divisions, which is not bad. Support Central Asia. Condemn warmongers next, because these guys are going to hit us hard. So hard. Oh, 28 divisions now. They have a lot less manpower, but... Oh, they definitely have way more divisions than us. Hopefully their divisions aren't very good, but of course we will have to wait and see. Uh, we're going to go and expand more money here, just because we need to mobilize more men for the front, so... That'd be very, very good. And... Reunification of Russia... 
Begin unification ducks. Let's try that one. Let's try that one. Oh, what does this say? Oh, look at all this stuff. If you like to read about this, please go right ahead. Tension between our two states is 15. Mutual receptiveness is 15. Diplomatic weight. Non-aggression agreement. Resource access treaty. Pro-unification factions. Mutual training exercises. Open diplomatic concessions. No. Enhance our diplomatic standing. Let's try that one. And propose a non-aggression agree agreement. We'll see. And then we'll do Condemn the Warmongers. There is no greater enemy of the, t the people than imperialist war. Throughout the 20th century, the powers of Europe, Asia, and North America have systematically sent their citizens to their, de to their deaths in the trenches, seas, and skies, all for the benefit of a tiny profiteering elite, Germany and Japan, the most ruthless imperialist powers on Earth, deserve special condemnation for their violent enslavement of their continents, plunging millions into the uttermost mi misery. Oh, look. Ben is one. The U.S., third and kindest superpower, practices only slightly better behavior, co coding its crimes beneath a veneer of concern for liberty and democracy as communists. We stand firmly against wars of aggression from all parties, and we intend to carry this principle onto the international stage. If the imperialists insist on continuing their bloodshed, we will continually ceaselessly criticize them. Cool. Look at this. So good. So good. Keep spending. Nice. And we'll see what happens with this. Now, we'll have to see what these guys want, because we have, while we have, do have 29 divisions... That's not nearly as much as the other people there. Condemn the warmongers. Nice. Propose a border treaty. If you'd like to read about this, please go right ahead. Secure peace. Sure. West. Oh, they're the West Russian. They were the West Russian, which is we're the West R Siberian. So we have way more diplomatic weight, which is nice. Regional development still kind of good. And technology. Oh, I'm glad I looked at technology. Get even more of that stuff. Good, good, good. And then a public of solidarity. A policy of solidarity. The world since the late 19th century has been in the thrall of imperialist power since we have steadily grown larger in size and fewer in number. Nowadays, as few as three or four great powers rule over the entire planet within our fist, with only small areas being truly independent. In Lenin's words, imperialism is a high stage of capitalism, and is the responsibility of any true soldiers to oppose it wherever it rears its ugly head. Oh, if you already like to read about that, please go right ahead. We can't do much to aid the colonized world from West Siberia, but we can offer our future support. When the Soviet Union rises from the ashes, it will herald a new dawn of anti-imperialist struggle and be a friend of socialist movements of national liberation the world over. Onwards. Cool. All right. Declaration of Friendship. Uh, let's try a Resource Access Treaty. We'll try that one. We still have more diplomatic weight, so that's good. Ooh, tensions is zero. And mutual receptiveness is 40. Not bad. Oh. Agriculture methods, yes. Well, are we on the highest one yet? We have modern... Yeah, we already are in the highest agricultural methods, which is, which makes sense. So we don't have to do that one, which is good. Uh, oh, they've developed... Put so much money in there. Look at that. It, it would be a shame if I was just to, to take stuff out of here. Uh, let's go with 600 million, maybe. Uh, that one. Thank you, comrades. Thank you. <laughs> Ah, oh, policy of solidarity, my friends. I denounce social fascism. One of the most insidious political ideologies in the world is social democracy, perpetrated a friend of the labor movement. It is, in fact, disarms and defangs the proletariat, funneling its energies into pointless reform movements, rather than firmly opposing capital and siding with warmongers and reactionaries time and time again. As was seen in the Great War, the failed German Revolution, the Russian Civil War, and the countless other conflicts. Far from being an ally of the workers... It is one of the most ingenious and tools of the bourgeoisie, just another side of the same coin as fascism. We must condemn social fascism wherever it rises, hopefully leading the workers of the Western world out of this trap. Those who are salvageable will listen. Those who are not will reveal themselves as such when they refuse to abandon the path of electoral reform. Offers a research agreement. Sure. Sounds like a good idea. Oh, I don't want to keep doing this every single time. But, uh, let's let time go on. 14 billion? Ah. <sighs> With the aid of other socialist international salt people, we shall improve ourselves. And I apologize for the clicking, but I just want to make sure we get what we want here. Thank you. Thank you. We definitely needed this. Ah, thank you very much. <laughs> oh, I love it. Uh, we, I can do that stuff, but I don't like doing that one. Uh, how about... Actually, let's get some better tanks. We, I forgot about the tank stuff, so... Yeah, 1950 tanks. I'm not going to cut it here. Oh, there goes a bearing council. That's not good. And when do we have this next one? Oh. They accept. Perfect balance of trade. Tensions is minus 10. Not bad. Mutual training exercises? Why not? Let's try that one. They announce social fascism. More technology done? Oh, hiring foreign instructors? Yes, please. Poverty relief? Yes, please. Agriculture? Nah, we good. And there we go. More defense and breakthrough. Thank you. 
And we should finish this part of the focus review, The Call of the Comintern. After the Bolshevik Revolution in 1918, the infant Soviet state formed a Communist International in the name of advancing socialist revolution. As a result of the revolutionary ebb of the interbellum and the rise of fascism, the Comintern failed to advance revolution outside the Soviet Union itself and did not survive the dissolution of Bukharin's government. As the revolutionary movement slowly but surely rebuilds itself, the need for a socialist international presents itself once again, the WSPR. The rightful successor of the fallen Soviet state is the obvious choice ahead of successor to the Comintern. Founding a socialist international will signal the rebirth of the international socialism. If such an organization already exists, we will join it, quickly taking up a leadership role and assist the furthering of the world revolution however we can. Hurrah! We just want to take the money, man. We need it for our <clears throat> debt programs. Thank you. Ah, very good. Import heavy machinery? You betcha. Social fascism. Cool. Refuses joint exercises. Oh, well, that's not good. Oh, well. Call the commentary, though. Mm. Oh, and social inter Oh, do we have this one, too? Okay. Vote yes. Vote no. Oh, that sucks. Well, let's see. Declaration of Friendship. Preliminary Conference. Infense incentivize pro-union factions. Yeah. 63. Mutual receptiveness. Hopefully this goes well. I've never unified peacefully before, so. Yeah, let's slide in with some manpower. It's not bad. Keep building. Now propose. Sure, why not? This could all go belly up very soon, though. 31 divisions is not bad. We're really trying to rush out as many of these divisions as possible. If that's the case, maybe save slightly more manpower. Because now they have up to how many? 41 to 61? That is so not good for us. Call the common turn. Beautiful, my friend. So we're done with the focus tree for now. Accept our application. Great. So, second turn member. Love it, love it, love it, love it. Are you guys so... Oh, you guys are killing each other now. Okay. And uh, that's good. That's good. Propaganda campaigns. Uh, well, I'd like to do that. Not really worth it right now. And we're going to need a lot of people to court the other states, so. <sighs> Incentivizing your allies. If you'd like to read about that, please go right ahead. Discreetly support them. Support them. 40, 40, 20. Revealed. Oh, I'll do this one. I don't mind coming back down here to look at the... Uh, oh, send your bureau. Sure, why not? Uh, we can't do anything here, so close that one. Five-year plan. Like I said, that's garbage, but... Five-year plan is almost done. Um, I don't mind doing what? This one. This one's okay to do for now. Just going to build up faster technology. Sure, why not? And, yeah, that's, that's pretty much all I want. Everything else is garbage. So this way we can build up faster, 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 hopefully. Construction speed is pretty good, though. A conference on unification. May the odds be in Russia's favor. Cool. Hmm... Mm -hmm. Oh, let's come over here. Get some better engineers. That'd be nice. That's actually very nice to do. Diplomatic. Oh. You can close that up for now. Close that one up for now. Our diplomatic weight is pretty high. Diplomatic concessions. Not worth it. Yeah, it's really not worth it. So, checking the air in the room. We must rally the Russians. This could be a viable course. If we were to seek the, for the successful peaceful unification between the people of the Soviet Soviet Republic of Western Russia and ourselves, then we must keep a watchful eye on how things are faring between each of our governments. Should things look well, then our plans shall be ready to be set in motion. Uh, sh uh, however, there's rising tensions between our states. We must rally the Russians. We must prioritize our sovereignty. Viable course. Rally the Russians. Why not? We'll see what happens. It's probably going to fail, but... You know what? We have more weight than them, so... 31 divisions, 3 tank divisions... Even though these tank divisions probably aren't that great. Hello. Ah, it's okay. They're okay. Begin final uni reunification talks. Yeah. As successful, the, the higher nation with the higher diplomatic weight shall annex the other. Come on, come on, Suslov. Give it up, give it up. We all love authoritarian socialism here. I still play Suslov sometime, though. If you'd like to read about him, please go right ahead. A preeminent power. Wow. The Red Eminence. Red Eminence. Eminence, yeah. Look at that political power you get. Wow, that is pretty nice. Come on. All right. Oh, things are falling apart around the world. Ah, uh, like what the capitalists and fascists deserve. I really want to see what happens. Come on, please, 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 please. 93, that's pretty good. I'm not going to lie, that's pretty darn good. 
Let's just grab this one ahead of time. It's fine. There we go. That's nice. How's artillery looking, too? Oh, we're looking really good on artillery. Actually, maybe too good. Um, we're going to replace these five of that. There you go. More tanks. More tanks. More casts. We have no manpower. That's not good. Please, let's peacefully reunify. I've never done it before. Join, uh, sure, yeah, yeah, sure, why not? Join exercise, that's going like fun. Okay, we got less than two weeks left. And about two weeks for that, too. Oh, man's falling apart, that's fine. I'm ready to spend some more money. 7.8% is not too bad, though. Come on. 51 versus 32. Our mutual receptiveness is 103. Come on, let it, let it happen. Come on, guys, let it happen. Let it happen. I've never done this before. Come on. So after so long, <gasps> our diplomats leave the conference with their new compatriots in tow in a steady treaty declaring the Soviet Republic of Western Russia's integration in the West Siberian People's Republic. These two nations, already so intertwined with each other economically, military, and poli politically, have now formed their unity by sharing a banner and name. Though work in adapting the Soviet Republic of Western Russia's laws and administration remains, our union can no longer be interfered with or interrupted by other ill-intentioned nations. With malice towards none and charity for all, we have bound one more wound on the motherland's bleeding soil after, yet after... Yet many more fester. Holy cow, we actually got it done! Holy crap, I've never had that happen before. Oh my gosh. Another, oh Jesus. Oh, I'm not even, oh the tanks, where are the tanks? What tanks do they have? I have these, what, what type of, oh, uh, that's not great. Oh god, how many different templates do they make? Eight, eight, I have these. Yeah, that's not great. They've actually, no they don't. Um. Uh, how about this, this is what we're going to do. Give me all the mechanized here. We'll turn them into tank divisions. Proper, actual tank divisions. You guys come over there. There you go. That's all we need. You all become 40 combat width. Which is going to hurt us greatly, but whatever. Uh, 23? Could you down... Just do that. There you go. Eight. There you go. Take one of you. Wow. Okay, so I think we're done building up the military then. Holy crap! I we've never, Oh my! I think. We're, oh, I'm I'm excited for this next one. I am excited for the next thing that's going to happen. I can't believe we actually did it. I can't believe it's actually happened. We were able to peacefully reunify. Holy cow! I love Suslov. I love a third turn socialism. Cool. So we got that done. We got that done. Oh my goodness! Oh, we need way more of these. Uh, get some, get more cast going. There you go. Other than that, oh crap! Oh, never mind. We gonna need a lot more of this stuff. Holy crud! Oh, we gonna need way more things here. Um, yeah, we'll go back down to that. There you go. Cool. Oh, and we gotta core everything here. Holy crud! Uh, but let's do this one. Russian reunification. Would you look at that? Extra influence Kazakhstan. Might as well do that before they can do anything there. Um. Yeah, if we do this fast enough, and it's just still fighting, we could probably still kill them off. But let's go and try to integrate everything here. 40 days is not too bad. But, let's read one more focus and call it an episode, shall we? The new institution. Let's do the, into the atomic age. I like to get this one done first, just, just because we can. But Russia has long been regarded by powers near and far as a backwater. A vast steep full of peasant farmers, and decades of revolution, collapse, and civil war has done little to challenge its perception. But, this will soon change. With the resources, human and otherwise, that we have acquired during our campaigns of reunification, we possess the ability to begin a nuclear program. The power of the atom is a great equalizer in the game of geopolitics, and we shall now act to harness it for ourselves. But if you enjoyed this episode, really, leave a like. That was awesome. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow, as we shall lead with Nikita Khrushchev and the fight against the reactionaries, fascists, and enemies of Russia. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.